So I have to start this off with a little bit of an apology. There's probably going to be a lot of video that is just a trailer. The reason is, is I'm having some problems with my capture card. I don't know what it is and trying to figure it out, which is really annoying because it's pretty expensive and it's been bugging me for a while now, at least for a few days. So hopefully this will mean nothing and I figured out the problem, but just wanted to throw that out because today I want to talk about Beyond Good and Evil the remaster, the 20th anniversary edition, the game that I was excited to play but yet it wouldn't pop up on the eShop until the very day that it came out and I do definitely want to get to that but I have another thing I want to mention. So I've been thinking about this whole giveaway, how I've been putting the codes in the video. Well, I'm going to keep doing that. There will be a video every week with a code in there. But I was also thinking about the people that maybe are just late to the video, or maybe it drops when they're at work, or I don't know, they want to watch it later. It's not really fair to them. And you know, money's tight, life's hard, but you know what? Nima is not hard. Well, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm not, well, I'm not, but you know, we're off track. My point is is I'm going to also be doing a giveaway of a $10 eShop card at the end of the week as well. And what I'll do is I will just put all the comments in every video for that week, which I will probably do Sunday through Saturday kind of thing. And I'll just assign a comment, a number, and then use a random number generator. And I will reply to the comment that won. And I'll also share something on the community. Just a way to get that out. Anyway, I just want to mention that because again, eh, we should all have more fun during the summer. And what is more fun than eShop credit? Well, one thing that might be is actually getting to the video. But please like, subscribe, do all that. Now we can finally get into Beyond Good and Evil. So this game did drop on Tuesday. And I think there was a number of people who were expecting it. Especially if you kind of pay attention to the video game news and all that. But it didn't show up on the eShop. So I was a little bit nervous to say the least. Because... This is a game that I've never played before. So while a lot of the reviews and channels are going to focus on the graphical changes, I can't honestly speak to those. I have seen what it looked like when it first came out and even the HD port that happened in like 2011. And in comparison to all of those, yeah, this version definitely looks like to be the best one. But I can't speak to it from personal experience because I've never played it. And that was one of the reasons why I was so excited for it to drop because this is one of those games that is almost iconic in its cult-like status. Like, there are so many of those games that almost just slip through the cracks, but yet are fan favorites, and this is one of them. I just never got a chance to play it. And honestly, I don't even remember the game coming out. Who knows, maybe I was too busy being forced to take my cousin to junior prom. But it, like many other games that came out in that time frame, are a concern to me, namely because of the controls. Those tank controls from, like, that PlayStation 2 era was just really bad. And so, I was very nervous nervous about that. That being like probably my biggest concern. Even the graphics weren't such an issue. Luckily though the graphics do look really good and I never really saw anything that made that game look less than really impressive honestly. That contrast between the 2004 version and the 2024 version is just insane. It almost looks like a completely different game. And honestly, I think it probably would have been unplayable if it had those same graphics. But the one other thing that I told you I was worried about was controls. This being just a fundamental part of the game. Luckily, the controls actually ported over really well. In fact, I sort of forgot that they were a concern of mine. Which speaks volumes to how well they ported that over. Because a game like Tomb Raider, I feel like the controls just completely ruined it for me. But now knowing that the controls worked really well, the graphics looked really good, was finally ready to focus on the game itself. And I have to say in this game, it's a really cool story with really interesting mechanics. In this game, you play as Jade, one half of the gruesome twosome that is Jade and PJ, who is an older pig apparently. You live in a very interesting world with some very interesting roommates, but right off the bat, you're invaded by aliens. Things are looking pretty dire, but fortunately for us, Jade can fight, which is good for most of her roommates or whatever they are, because most of them have been apprehended by the aliens. Now, with the help of Alpha Force Section, you're able to remove these aliens from your island. You get to figure out that this is a pretty common occurrence, and the biggest issue in this situation was that you guys ran out of electricity. You see, you need electricity, or this sort of barrier that covers your part of the island. And unfortunately, you do not have the cash to pay for electricity. So Jade is trying to figure out how to earn money when she actually gets an opportunity 
to just take pictures of different wildlife, send it in, and when she fills 10 of them up, she'll get a prize, but for each picture, she also gets some cash. So this starts one of the main mechanics of the game, and that is just to take pictures, which I think is a really cool thing about the game, because as much as, yes, there's aliens, your friend is an older pig, and you guys fight together, you're also a photographer. And that is kind of overshadowed, at least in my mind, for a lot of it. Now, Jade really does take on that role of being more of a journalist than she does like a warrior. It's then when you get the opportunity to hunt down a very rare female and male creature. And if you're able to take a picture of both of them together, you're gonna get 3,000 credits. And this is coming from a very weird source, someone you've never heard of before, but what the heck, it's not that far away and you need some cash. So once you've done this mission, you actually discover that this individual didn't really care about the picture. It was more of a test. And in fact, in fact, they want you to work with them. They want you to be like an investigative journalist for them, or an agent, a spy, as they tell you about the deep, dark secrets that's happening all around you. In fact, those that are meant to protect you may be the ones hurting you. They have reason to believe that they are trafficking people, enslaving people, maybe even doing worse. So they want you to get the evidence. You and your trusty camera are now on your way to be able to solve this mystery. And that's really where the game takes off and the story really expands. You're also given a little bit more freedom and there are certain things in the game like for instance your main vehicle your main way of travel is through a boat um, one that you actually tinker with all the time you upgrade and you exchange different parts for pearls these pearls are kind of hard to find but you're able to go and like hunt for more pearls and trade them into the garage where you're able to get upgraded parts better guns make this boat faster things like that but there's also other things that you can do while you're out and around but i'll be honest for the most part the game is rather Rather linear. There isn't a whole lot of side questing or anything to do. And in fact, the game comes in at about six, six and a half hours, but it is a really fun six to seven hours with all the puzzle solving that you do. The combat, which if I'm being honest, is not the greatest because it's really only one button. You can either tap or you can charge it by holding it down for an improved attack. But honestly, I don't know if I would want it to be any different. Even though the combat wasn't, in my opinion, like fleshed out or anything, I think it kind of just works for the game though. Because it's not only combat that you're worrying about. You are also spending a lot of your time focusing on taking pictures, especially if you want extra cash and you want extra perks by cataloging all the organic life that you're taking pictures of. Simply by sending it to the science center. Don't worry, most of that's done for you automatically. But so there is like this two-pong mechanic going on. Not only is it combat, not only is it photography, you actually also have the puzzle solving as well. So the combat being restricted to one button doesn't really seem that restricting in general because it's not the star of the show. It's just one of many attributes that this game has. Ultimately, I give this game a 9 out of 10. I really really enjoyed it. The best part being, and something that a lot of other games could learn from right now, it's coming out at $20, which is a very reasonable price for this game. Not only is it only about six to seven hours, but it's also an older game. I feel like Nintendo could learn a lesson since they just announced that that Donkey Kong Country, the Wii game, is going to be $60, and it doesn't look like they did half as much work was done in Beyond Good and Evil. I'm telling you, the game just seems like it was made with a lot of love and care. But anyway, that's my thoughts on it. I'm curious what your thoughts are. Uh, let me know, is this game you played before? Are you interested in picking it up? Anything, everything down in that comment section below. I love each and every one of you guys. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.